Welcome back to my vlog. I'm currently in Vancouver and my day started with checking in at the Fairmont Waterfront Hotel. The view from my hotel room is spectacular overlooking the harbour. After settling in I went to the Templeton Diner and had breakfast. I ordered the pancakes with blueberry compo and fruit which were so decadent I couldn't finish the plate. After breakfast my friend and I went to Capilano River Regional Park to burn the calories. The park is a stunning rainforest separate from the overpriced tourist destination Capilano Bridge. The park is home to a series of hiking trails, scenic picnic spots and a variety of interesting wildlife. The sight of towering trees and lush greenery was just breathtaking. There are several wooden bridges on the trails and the trails are well marked and easy to follow with some challenging uphill and downhill paths. We came across some peaceful streams and waterfalls which provided a peaceful and serene atmosphere. The sound of water flowing was so refreshing and calming. We also visited the salmon hatchery established in 1971 to support local salmon population and offer visitors a chance to learn about their life cycle. Personally I went there to witness the salmon run and it was an amazing experience to watch these large fish jump upstream. From the salmon hatchery we took another trail to visit the Cleveland Dam. The spillway is a major attraction but there was little water flowing due to a drought. The dam is an impressive sight at 91 metres tall and 100 metres wide. As you approach the dam you will see the towering mountains in the background and the beautiful Capilano River flowing down below. After a long day of hiking we decided to cool off in the park's crystal clear river. Capilano River Regional Park is a must visit for adventure and nature lovers. It offers breathtaking scenery and thrilling activities. After returning to the city we visited Happy's Seafood and Oyster Bar on Denman Street for happy hour drinks and oysters. We ended our evening at Maruachi Ramen on Bidwell Street where we had some of the best ramen in Vancouver. We started the day at Cartum Donuts with Earl Grey and smoked maple walnut donuts. Then we visited Granville Island's public market known for fresh produce, artisan crafts and tasty bites. The market also offers an extensive range of cuisine from seafood to ethnic dishes. I had chicken pot pie while admiring the Vancouver skyline and Granville Bridge. Afterwards we enjoyed coffee and pumpkin pie before walking around. Granville Island. After visiting the market we strolled around Granville Island and stopped at Boku Bakery. We enjoyed an apple pie bun before continuing to our next destination which had been recommended by many of my Vancouver friends. Wreck Beach in Vancouver is a popular spot with breathtaking views, sand and waves. Located at the University of British Columbia, it is a naturist mecca. The beach is surrounded by cliffs and trees and the sand is coarser and darker than other beaches in the area. It's a tranquil and secluded spot with plenty of space to relax. However, make sure you pack a protein bar. The hike up the stairs from the beach is a full-on workout. We were starving after we walked up the steep stairs to the main road so we made our way to the Sunshine Diner, a retro style restaurant that will take you back in time. The atmosphere is lively and the food, atmosphere and service are all excellent. Uh, bring your camera as every nook and cranny of the diner is Instagram worthy. We walked around Gastown at night, a historic district in northeast downtown Vancouver, known for Victorian architecture and trendy restaurants. Our first stop was Gastown Steam Clock, a famous tourist attraction built in 1977 that whistles and puffs steam every 15 minutes. So make sure you get your cameras ready for that Insta-worthy photo. Today we are exploring Canada's west coast and heading towards Shannon Falls, a legendary landmark. We drove through the scenic Sea to Sky Highway, stopping to take countless selfies of the breathtaking mountains and gleaming glacial lakes. 
Shannon Falls, which stands 335 metres high, is the highlight of our journey today. The entire area is perfect for a day out with picnic tables, benches and hiking trails scattered around. Our next stop was Whistler Village, where we enjoyed lunch with a view of the surrounding mountains before heading to Lost Lake. As the name suggests, it felt like we had lost ourselves in nature with this tranquil lake, towering trees and pink and purple wildflowers. Lost Lake was the perfect end to our Whistler day trip and it's hard to pick which place we enjoyed more, Shannon Falls or Lost Lake. But one thing is certain, Canada has some of the world's most beautiful landscapes. We were exhausted after a long day of sightseeing and driving, so we called it an early night. It was raining again this morning, so we decided to stay indoors during the day. We started our day by visiting Revolver Coffee for our morning pick-me-up, followed by a boozy breakfast at White Spot. After breakfast, we walked back to our hotel via Robson Street, which is the most famous shopping street in Vancouver. We visited Stanley Park after the rain stopped. This park spans a thousand acres and is home to beautiful landscapes, wildlife and tons of activities. We rented bicycles and rode along the seawall, a nine kilometre paved pathway that circles the park and offers breathtaking views. We saw totem poles, visited the Vancouver Aquarium and enjoyed other attractions in the park. Stanley Park is a must visit location in Vancouver with numerous activities like hiking, swimming and picnicking. It also offers picturesque spots like the forested pathways, beaches and the famous Lionsgate Bridge. It's the perfect destination for families and travellers alike to spend a day surrounded by nature and beautiful landscapes. At night we went to Mainham, a Michelin recommended restaurant serving authentic Thai cuisine since 2009. We had a delicious meal followed by a visit to Rain or Shine ice cream which uses locally sourced and organic ingredients. To end our day, we visited Cat Solano Beach. For our last day in Vancouver, I started my day with a breakfast of champions, apple pie at Pie Hole Cafe. Afterwards, I visited the beautiful Van Dusen Botanical Gardens, which is an incredible 55 acre paradise filled with over 7,500 plant species from around the world. It's an absolute must visit destination in Vancouver. As we strolled around the garden, we were greeted by vibrant colors and fragrant scents. The garden has different sections to explore, such as the Italian and Japanese gardens. It's the perfect place to take a few photos for Instagram. The reflective pool and Zen rock garden are particularly impressive. And you can spend hours meditating and enjoying the sounds of nature around you. It is hard to choose a favourite area, but the expertly landscaped woodland garden is truly magical. You'll feel like you're in a fairy tale as you wander along the winding paths and discover hidden treasures among the plants and trees. Van Dusen Botanical Garden is a real gem that's worth visiting any time of the year. After my garden tour, I tried Le Coq Frite for lunch and had the best chicken burger in Vancouver. Five stars from me. After taking some rest at the hotel, we went to Cafe Kutsune for afternoon coffee. The coffee and cake were both incredibly decadent. As a food enthusiast, I was excited to visit the popular dim sum restaurant Juicy Bao in Vancouver before concluding our day. The restaurant has an extensive menu and I decided to try some of their most popular dishes, including the Zhao Long Bao. Food was top notch. As the night drew to a close, we prepared to bid farewell to Vancouver next morning.